Hi everybody, Dacov here. Welcome back to my channel. And I'm actually going to repeat this again. Hi everybody, Dacov here. Welcome back to my channel. Because, yeah, okay, we're live. Um, I'm not seeing any chat popping up. Maybe you're just getting the notifications right now. This has come unannounced. I did not even post on Twitter that I'm going live. So this is all a big surprise. Um, and as usual... I, I don't see anybody. Ah, okay. I do see chat. So, vegan gangsta. Woohoo. How's it going, vegan gangsta? <laughs> um, welcome to a live feed by Super D. Yes. Okay. So, I just wanted to quickly just pop him and pop out. I'm like one of those toys in the aisles. They're called chase variants. You know, there's like a variation of a toy that is comes out unannounced, it just randomly is placed in a box and then it gets delivered to a Toys R Us near you or some other toy shops, whatever, and then kids run through the aisles of the toy store to find them. That's basically what I'm doing with these videos, which doesn't really do me much positively well. I mean, doesn't do me much good in terms of viewership because nobody knows I'm going to go live. But I figure this is more fun. It's just really spontaneous in the moment. If you're up for it, it just happens and, you know, you just so happen to be there and you pop on by and you're in the fashion bunker and we get to talk a little, basically. Oh, Toys Box. Yeah, so glad I'm here. Hi, Toys Box. How you doing? Um, Gloria Gibson. Hi, yeah. How you doing, Gloria? Eileen. Hi, Eileen. Hi, handsome. Love from Vancouver. Hi, how you doing? A lot of love to Vancouver. Uh, Lena D says, hi. Hello. <laughs> So how's it going, guys? Oh, look at all these people and all these hearts. Wonderful. Thumb up the video if you like it. Send us the love. Send us the thumbs. Um, Milena says hi. Hi, Milena. How's it going? So yes. Okay. What am I wearing today? I'm wearing Christian Lacroix vintage 90s shirt. I'm wearing Mishka for New Era cap. Also a couple of years old. Cruise. Wait, is this the cruise? Or is it the Metier da? Chanel, 2012. I th it's the Versailles collection. So I think that was the cruise Versailles collection. Uh, bracelet. Elena Matei, how's it going, sweetie? Just right now, I was watching your channel number five Chanel review. I think I saw it 20 times. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's great. Keep watching it. Oh, the bracelet snaps when I move my arm here. Because it's a magnetized thing so if you twist it wrongly it opens slightly and then it closes again very dangerous when you're out and about with this little thing because it might fall off <laughs> nobu electric says hi how you doing sweetie so chanel number five by the way i had it somewhere ah, i i put it away because right i had it here in the bunker but i don't at the moment uh the carmen says mr cancer no crab sorry the, the zodiac sign is cancer. The crab is... Yeah, because I have little things here. They go cluck, cluck, cluck. Uh, Pedro Polman Giriboni. Hi, babe. Question. When you buy vintage perfume or fragrances, do you question yourself who had it before? I am Brazilian and we're quite superstitious. LOL. Pedro, if you only knew where I come from. Superstition. You ain't seen nothing. <laughs> Listen. Yes. Um, I'm cautious when purchasing secondhand splash bottles. But not when I'm purchasing spray bottles. Because, you see, I envision the glass surrounding the liquid as a protection, as a force field of protection. So as long as it's a spray, you, have, you cannot access the liquid with your hands, with your body. Hence... I think also with the spirit, it's detached. If it's a splash bottle, yes, for the purpose of archiving vintage pieces, I do buy them. But I'm not so keen always. Yeah, eh, Actually, no, I do have a couple vintage bottles. Like number 19, the pure perfume, 30 milliliter. Well, back then it was 28 milliliter. Um, I use it. I don't care. I think to myself, I'm like this. Oh, you want to shed some negative energy on me through your perfume? We'll see about that. Because <laughs> I can 
do you want better? I can top your negative energy with triple, quadruple, tri triple, double, double, triple, quadruple of my potent energy, and I'm going to neutralize your negative energy, and then that negative energy is going to be a thing that fuels my positive energy, and then the perfume is going to be fabulous. That's how I think about it. Literally, wash, washes over me, off me, like water off a duck's back literally because i just i couldn't you know care less and i think to myself there are ways to purify anything you know if what i don't like is when people are around me they're in a weird mood and have bad vibes and sometimes because of work related issues you got to stick around them for some time you can't just like say get the f out of here uh but i think i get the message across <laughs> very well nevertheless even though i'm like smiling you can see you can still see if i don't like you and um i'm just always very transparent that way i i can't hide emotions always super honest it's a burden in life to be honest really at the end of the day because this society don't like it they want you to always be fake and that's super annoying to me um the the can man says i love hi hi can man um, Pedro says, I loved your comment going to buy a 1985 poison eau de toilette. If you buy, it's yours. Uh, you mean like, I don't get it. I don't understand quite. I loved your comment going to buy a 1985 poison eau de toilette. If you buy, it's yours. Ice cream, champagne. All right. <laughs> I'm not so sure I understand what you mean. Love the bottle glass theory. Our juice is protected. Oh, yes, it is. Totally. Um, ah, oh, the can man says, I love you. Ah, oh, thank you, can man. Love you too. Um, Goonie Berry One. I'm taking a follow from your lead and stop buying makeup. I mean, you know, I stopped purchasing new stuff back in 2017, but now my one year ban is over. I did that experiment. I tried to better myself and the world and now I'm buying again. Very cautiously, stuff I've been thinking about. Who's to say I might stop again, but for now, you know, I opened my little window. I can buy some stuff and that window will shut again, probably. Taylor D just joined. Hi, Jacob. Hi, Taylor. How you doing? Um... Lena says, what do you think about Profumumroma perfumes? If you ever tried them? Nope, I have not. Uh, Meek says, hello. Hi, Meek. How you doing? Uh, Lauren Wegstaff says, hi, Dacov. Hi, Lauren. How's it going, sweetie? So, yeah. Ooh, look at all the people in the chat. Any questions? I just explained the situation with the positive and negative energies of used fragrances. It's all good. And the same thing with clothes, you know, like you're buying secondhand clothes and then like some people wrote me, oh, but buying secondhand, I don't know, it's somebody, it's dirty, it's somebody else's energies in there, blah, blah, blah. Quite frankly, this is the thing. Yeah, you buy it. If it's washable, you wash it and then it's yours. If it's some particular material that's really difficult to wash and you kind of just wash certain parts of it under the armpits or stuff like that, and the rest might be a little bit older or dirty, whatever. It's like, honestly, quite frankly, after three days of wearing it becomes your dirt. It's like, it's, it's, it's yours. And I just, maybe my energy is so overpowering that I just cover up whatever energy was on it before and I just move on, you know, and I'm happy the way it is. Toys Box says, Jacob, did you check the pre-spring Chanel collection? Actually, I just started checking it out. I saw all the bags that are online and um, I've seen half of the jewelry. I managed to get through to the rainbow brooch and then I had to leave. So I haven't seen it all yet. No spoilers. Um, there are a couple of bags. I'm really liking the kind of camera bag, like the reissue style camera bag, not the one with all the ornaments, but the denim one. And I'm loving the camera bag just with a de-stressed calfskin leather, but they're expensive and they're super tiny. So you know what I mean? I, they, they, they don't beat the 255 reissue. So why buy that one? You know what I mean? I, if I were to buy, Another Chanel bag, well, pff, you know, it would be another reissue <laughs> and it would be a jersey, a black jersey reissue, you know, classic 
Coco's original material used for the first one she ever made. That that's something I would buy. Um, let's see. Um, Brenda says hi, Deco. Good to see you again. Hi, Brenda. How are you? Um, Goonie Berry says your feelings about the classic Avon fragrances. Um, some are good, some are bad, some are like, again, a lot of reformulations. And I, and yeah, but I don't use Avon fragrances, so it's not like I can go in, in, in depth reviewing particular way that they develop and, and how they work on the skin because I really need to spend some time with a brand, you know, and with their kind of um, philosophy in order to be able to really give a verdict in terms of like also wanting to purchase them or have them or hunt them down secondhand, you know. Alexei says, hi there. Hi, Alexei. How are you? Um, M loves pups. Do you think that not buying anything new for a year was a valuable experience? Yes. Very valuable experience because it makes you think. It makes you understand. It, it, you become more analytical. You understand more how brand marketing works and how they kind of try to... Because, you know, it's not that I stopped following all the trends and what was going down, you know, in, in the ethereal world of the internet and promotion-wise and advertisement campaigns and and the crazes that come and go and people standing in line to buy, you know, Louis Vuitton Supreme and the Yeezys coming out and the this and that. And it's just... Um, you manage to detach yourself and you're capable at a certain point after a couple of months to really stand outside of that bubble and observe from a distance and realize that you don't need any of that and you become immune to it and you start really analyzing yourself. What is it that you quintessentially as yourself, as your character love? What is, what is it that you would like to focus on without stopping purchasing anything at all new? Like, what is it that is valuable to you in terms of, you know, purchasing you? And for me, despite all the problems that I have with Chanel that I've had in the past, I still love that brand so much, you know, and I still, some pieces are still incredible. I've just done an unboxing a couple of days ago of the first two purchases I made in 2018, the two Chanel brooches from the Fall Winter 17 collection, and they are incredible. I went through the entire collection online and then in store a couple of times prior to my ban ending just to get an idea, a feel for the quality of the pieces and a couple of pe the ones that I purchased are the ones that I think are great. Uh, you know, had there been more amazing quality pieces that I love that maybe I would have gone for those, but those are the two pieces that I thought, okay, these are my highlights. This is what really stands out to me. This is what really yells to me. Chanel, uh, heritage of Chanel, the quality is there. Both pieces are made in France. You know, a lot of very, very analyzing a lot of aspects and details. And then I, I, then I went for it. And that's maybe a thought. Yes, a lot of this thought process goes into my purchase, went into the purchases also in the past years prior to my one-year ban. Uh, but now it's even more concrete. Like I spend more time at home looking through things. Usually when I go to a store, I already know what I want, but I let myself get surprised. Like I surprise myself with the pieces. And then sometimes I find a piece in the store that I wouldn't have considered had I only seen it on photo. But now I was even more analytical before I went for the jugular, before I, you know, opened the wallet basically. So it was very valuable in those terms. And also I did more analysis in terms of sustainability of materials used, you know, which materials are used to create a piece, how much waste. Um, Chanel won't tell you that, obviously. They, they hide the, that information. But probably a lot, of way, a lot of waste goes into luxury because to create luxury, you have to ha create waste as well, which is kind of sad uh, to think of it. So, but, and most of that waste usually happens when you're making clothes, but I don't purchase Chanel clothes, really. I'm more into the accessory part of things. Um... And, you know, I've learned much more about Vivian Westwood in the past year and about her climate revolution and creating, you know, garments that are more, um, that are made to last. Her motto is buy less, choose well, make it last. And that's something that is very, very important to me as well. Hence, when I purchase something, I don't purchase a seasonal craze. I purchase it because I love it and that love will not fade with time. Um, Erica Cooper. Hello, love. Hi, Erica. How you doing, sweetie? Uh, uh, 
uh, Dwayne uh, Cormier, Jacob, I buy lots of old vintage perfumes. Some are glorious. Uh, remember, perfume is 95% alcohol. Yes, I mean, vintage, per well, some are 95% alcohol, some are 71% alcohol. It all depends on the concentration, formulation, what have you. Uh, and the older they get, the more concentrated they get. You have less alcohol in vintage ones. It evaporates. You get more of the essential oils left over. Uh, that's why most fragrances, when they get really old and vintagey, they kind of lose their top notes. Most of the top notes are connected to the alcohols. And then you have those that fleet off pretty soon or immediately. And then you, what is left is kind of a resinous type of dry down, which is amazing. So vintage is great. Uh, P. O'Connell says that shirt is gorgeous. Thank you so much. This is a vintage Christian Lacroix shirt. A lot of embroidery and stitching going on. This is from the late 90s or early 2000s. I think late 90s. Um, Toys, Toys Box says, I want the peace and love brooch uh, from Chanel. It's very Moschino though. Not, It's not very much Chanel. It's very much Franco Moschino and a little bit Jeremy-ish too. You know what I mean? So as cute as it is, do we need a love and peace brooch by Chanel for like 10 times the price? than a love brooch that we could get from some other brand because Chanel is not about love, peace, the hippie movement. You know what I mean? So that's where I start thinking, does this belong to the history of Chanel? Would have Coco made something like this? Yes, it's a whimsical piece, but, but you know what I mean? Like that's when I start thinking, do I need this need? Do I need anything? Do I want this piece? I like the concept of it, but to me personally, it's not, it's not very much Chanel. People compare Avon's charisma with Coco. Pedro says that. Uh, Eileen asks, what do you think of the Chanel old medium boy bag versus uh, the new one? Please give me your advice. Thank you. I like the new ones. I like the old ones too. Uh, wait, like them. I'm not a boy fan. You know that. The bag. <laughs> so this is the thing. Um... It doesn't matter the shape, it, it, the size, if it's more elongated or more compact, you know, if the proportions are more like in the length or if they're more high. Also, the classic bag passed through different kind of baguette shapes and more compact shapes uh, throughout history. So it's just normal that the boy bag also goes through those as tendencies of shapes of bags come and go. Um, but in general, I've been toying with the idea of one particular boy bag, but I don't want to jinx it yet. Who knows if it, if it happens or not. There's only one type of boy bag, one style that I would ever consider getting. And there's a very specific playful reason behind it. But let's see if that, if that happens or not. Um, all right. Carla Pastrana says, Hey, Dacob, I can't believe you're alive. And I have my swimming lesson 15 minutes. Oh my God, love your style and personality. Keep being your lovely self. Greetings from South America. Hi, Carla. Well, don't miss your swimming lessons. Uh, you could watch the video later. But anyway, hi, big, big uh, hi to you. And thank you for tuning in. Alka says, can you make a video about skincare? I did make a video about skincare. Well, not where I like kind of put it all over myself, but I showed a couple, I think two videos about some of the products that I used to use in the past. Maybe, I, maybe it's time to make an updated video uh, to showcase to you guys what I use now. Uh, the skincare products that I'm using lately. Not many. I'm very essential. I have one eye cream. I have one uh, hydrating facial cream. Um, I have a lip balm and... Is that it? Yeah, that's it. Sometimes I use kind of a serum, but actually lately I'm not using a serum because I'm using a particular cream that it kind of is both. It hydrates and it's it kind of plumps the skin. It, it, it forces the skin to create collagen. So that's a really good one. Um, okay. Dwayne says, I forgot to say hello. Dwayne. Hi, Dwayne. Uh, but what do you think about the Dior Privé discontinuing some and the new fragrances coming out? Some look wonderful. Check them out uh, on a thread um, somewhere else. Okay. So, well, this is the thing. Ah, Lacey. Hey, Lacey. How you doing, sweetie? Oh, Lacey. I miss you so much. Listen, you gotta, we gotta do a video together soon. Like, 
connected because I figured out how all this thing works. So let me know if, if you're up for that. The sleepless nights I spent because I had a lot of issues at the end of last year, Lacey, and I was watching your de-makeup videos from your wonderful, wonderful 100 days uh, makeup challenge. And uh, guys, check out Lacey Noel's channel, by the way, while we're here, while we're at it. Uh, and the longer, the better, Lacey. Just keep them coming. I love that you just slow. It's so, for me, calming. I literally fell asleep so many times watching your videos, just like relaxing. You're taking off the makeup, a couple of people chat with you, but you're super chill. And just that process of taking something off, it's very cathartic, you know, having a, an amazing makeup done, like artwork done, almost like a costume effect for a movie and taking it off takes a lot of time, but it's so, it's like a meditation process. It's very soothing. Also, it's just to listen to and to watch when you can watch and um, love it. Really enjoyed it so much. Anyway, Lazy says, oh, of course. Oh, thank you. Yay. <laughs> so, um, all right. So wait, a Privé discontinue. Okay. Sorry, Dwayne. We're back. Um, what do you think about the Dior Privé discontinuing some and the new fragrances coming out? Okay. You know, this is really annoying to me that the Privé line, the Dior is discontinuing a lot of fragrances. And this has to do mostly... I don't know if it has to do with sales because, quite frankly, the first three that came out back in the early 2000s, which were Bois d'Argent, Eau Noir, and Cologne Blanche. Eau Noir was discontinued, then brought back because people complained en masse. And um, Cologne Blanche was forever discontinued in favor of Cologne Royale, which I don't like at all. But that, but that you see, sorry, I bumped my mic. That's because... I personally think Demachy, who took over the creation of the perfumes... Uh, of Dior, you know, he wanted his creations to be up there. So he would kind of try to eliminate the ones that were, that weren't created by him. So Colon Blanche, which is a miracle of a fragrance, seriously, is discontinued in favor of Demachy's creation, uh, Colon Royale. Not happy with this, with these ego trips. Like these perfumers that are at the head of these houses, of these huge luxury houses, they're earning millions. Like, and on top of that, you need the ego? Really? Let go, boo. Just give it a rest. You know, let, be let beautiful masterpieces remain as they are. That's what I say. There's 20 of them. I don't know how many concoctions of perfumes are available now by Dior Privé. Why can't you leave the original three as they are and add all the other 20 that you created? Yes, you're the best, but leave those three, at least three of them, you know? I really don't get it. I would have left them just for the sake of heritage, tradition. Those were the first three. They started the whole thing. They started the whole saga of these privé uh, concoctions. Just, you know, be proud of them instead of like discontinuing them. That's like, you know, pooping on your own history. I don't like it at all, to be honest with you. Um... UFO guy 0507, when are we getting a new Q&A? Would love to know more about you as a person. Well, my dear, this is a live chat. If you haven't figured that out yet, and you just asked the question, Q, and I just answered, A. <laughs> so ask, you know, if it's something that is answerable, I will answer for sure. So actually live chats are a sort of community growing type of video where we do Q&A as well, obviously. Um, I interact the best if you send me uh, questions because then, then you know, we can have a discourse. Um, <laughs> Toys Box said, I'd like Lacey to be my wife. So gorgeous woman. Oh, Lacey, what a wonderful compliment. <laughs> uh, Smoking Oaken 66. Hi, Jacob. Oh my God. I just watched your Moschino show and it was so fun hearing your review. I agree on Christian Lacroix, Galliano, Equestrian, Horse Spit Shoulders, Hats, and Black Swan. I'm so happy to see you. Thank you so much. Happy to see you too. And I'm so glad you enjoyed the Moschino video. I know it was a, quite a long video, but once I started reviewing, you know, I have this passion for fashion. Passion for fashion. Oh my God. It's so lame. But anyway, passion for fashion. So when, when, I start reviewing a video. It's not that I can contain myself and be like, okay, this, we got to make this 15 minutes. There's like 80 looks in the collection. You're supposed to like review at each single look. You know, you can't just like dismiss something in favor of something. Well, you could, but I kind of want to go through the whole thing through the whole process. It's kind of like a trip, a travel. And it took the time it took, but I'm really glad you liked the video. 
Uh, Lacey says, you have the best lighting in any live stream I've ever seen. <laughs> and Lacey, thanks. Um, Toys Vox. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Lacey. You know I'm all about the light <laughs> in the bunker. Um, Brenda Tierney says, where are you from originally? From a far away place. Far, far away. Where dreams are born. <laughs> That's where I come from. Um, wait. Okay, so as Smoking Oaken 66 says, and a lot in reference to the Moschino collection, Fall Winter 18, uh, a lot of military and, and Nazi Germany depressing looks. Yeah, it, it was very dark. It was, it was very dark. But I, I think it kind of matches these difficult times we're going through right now. I think uh, in terms of nailing the mood of the political times we're in right now, I think it kind of fits, sadly. UFO guy 507, ha, touche. Um, and Smoke and Oak and 66, and very 50 Shades of Grey. Yeah, a little bit, for sure. Um, Smoke and Oak and 66 says, it was perfect at an hour. We all enjoyed it. Oh, thank you so much. No, because, you know, I checked the statistics, I got to. So one hour video takes a lot of work to prepare it, to create it, to make it. And it's not like exponentially a blast in itself out there on YouTube sphere, you know? It's really, I don't know. It's, I guess people are scared of the length, you know? It's something I usually say, like with the attention span of a fruit fly, everything longer than three minutes, people are like, I'm scared to click on it. It's too long, too long. I can't manage. I'm like, whatever. You can scroll through it too, you know? You can find something interesting to listen to. I personally tend to watch longer videos. The longer, the better. That's just in my nature. I like to kind of fall into a video, you know, and really to kind of let go and have somebody guide me through their world and stories because I need more time to fall into something, definitely. Um, yes. So Jake says, thoughts on, on Paul Poiré? Uh, would love a fashion history video about legendary fashion designers. Okay, that's something to think about. I've been thinking about doing that in the past, but that is something that really would require more than just me sitting in front of a camera and talking. That would require literally a get-together. Like, that's a lecture. That's something that I would do at a university or somewhere where you literally have uh, your PowerPoint, you have your presentation, you have a blackboard or a whiteboard, something to write on. You know, it requires more mediums than just, or media than just the camera situation. Uh, and to make a video where I would actually talk about something like this in specific with blending in all the images and history, that, that requires a lot of work. And then to create a video like that, you know, it, I need a much more substantial audience. Like we're talking, you know, tens of thousands of people watching if online, otherwise within a closed room with live people that you can interact with, it's a different situation um, because that requires much more preparation, you know. And I love doing it, but um, it needs to be set up slightly different from our usual setup, either live like we're doing now or my pre-recorded videos. Um, Smokey Noken says, I have a fragrance question though. Have you ever tried Aniku Tal fragrances? Uh, they're, so, uh, they're so old school and amazing. You would love them. Yes, Aniku Tal has some amazing fragrances, also very expensive, but you know, I always have to kind of Try to limit. I don't want to purchase too much, you know. Um, right now, super pricey. Uh, Frederick Mal. I'm discovering Frederick Mal. I, I, I allow myself to take the time to really dive into uh, a perfume house. I know a lot of different perfumers create perfumes from Frederick Mal for Frederick Mal, but I want to get into that philosophy, you know, before I, because, you know, a lot of people do niche hopping and they're all over the place. That's not me. I, I really, really am in that way, very specific and obsessive about something. If I love a topic, I really want to get everything out of it as much as I can and then move on to the next one, just to be sure that I didn't miss anything, you know, but if I'm, you know, traveling something, especially like duty-free shops. I, I sniff around, you know, uh, everything I can sniff in, in the time I have before the flight, for sure. And Anikutal is also often present. 
Um, Smoke and Oaken says, but Moschino has always been an uplifting collection, fun colors, silhouettes, and statement pieces. Yeah, I know. This collection was not very Moschino at all. Totally true. John asks, can we get more videos of you out in town talking about things you love and enjoy uh, and enjoying your day? <laughs> no, because I'm not enjoying my day. <laughs> No, I enjoy my day, but guys, it would be pr relatively dull. I'm not one of those YouTubers that actually, well, for now, let's see how the future develops. But I literally have a very busy schedule and I work. And a lot of the things that I do, that I'm obligated to do contractually, um, some of these things involve like not being allowed to talk about them. So I cannot take you to work. I cannot show certain things. And so... It, it, it's weird. I have to find always the right moment in time and space where I'm really free um, out and about outside of the bunker. But I would love to. And uh, I actually love to, you know, to do like follow me around videos and stuff like that. And more will come in the future. Definitely more as slowly. I don't know if this is really going to happen or not. But for now, YouTube is still a mess in terms of monetization and demonetization of videos because I, you know, they're still demonetizing every single video you upload. So there are ways of kind of, I'm trying to experiment ways how to avoid getting demonetized and then re-monetized like 10 days later after all your viewers have seen the video. So you basically you get zilch, zero, nada, nisba, nothing, you know, for, for the videos that you create, which is super sad. Um, so as I hope these bots and these cretin you know programs that are that have been programmed but i don't know who to demonetize automatically videos of potentially hazardous <laughs> content i'm like it's a perfume review really you demonetize it you know and then they apologize and they remonetize it a week later but it's just ridiculous so doing extra videos of like follow me around and finding the time to do them you know requires also from youtube's part like they should come you know they should come halfway like compromise as well they can't just block everything and then of course my subscribers expect certain things but i can't deliver everything because on one end youtube is blocking a lot of stuff and and on the other end you know i have to weigh the pros and the cons of doing it because i need to cut out time and time for me is very precious to be able to film these videos and Leaving the bunker, going out and about requires a lot of time in terms of filming, prepping, you know, coordinating. So it saves me also time to film indoors, actually. It, it allows me to communicate with you even more. You know, had I done this sort of video now outdoors, it wouldn't have been live. And second of all, it wouldn't have been this long. This is already very long now. Uh, and third, um, it would have required, you know, pre-post editing. And that's all a lot of time, which I don't have at the moment. Hopefully in the future, I will have more time. The willpower is there, but a lot of kind of the stars have to align, you know, in many respects. And also, as you've seen, um, the sneak peek preview that I've shown you, I took it offline. It was just special for my most loyal subscribers who have been there through thick and thin who watch every single video of mine. I hid a jewel inside of a video and, and, and where I, right before New Year's Eve, I showed you one of the bigger projects I'm working on. Uh, for this year. That's huge. That's a huge endeavor to be able to kind of bring that to fruition and to be able to finalize it and, you know, bring it out and, 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 and um, distribute it properly. It, it, it's like, like that's your whole day is filled out trying to, to make that product work. It's, it's really hard, really tough. Um, Abhishek Gohil, what about power of Sir Karl Lagerfeld dominated Italian and French fashion with Fendi and Chanel? Well, he's powerful. He's just like, he's like in terms of fashion designers, I call him more a stylist than a designer. He's like the Anna Winter of Vogue. He is the Anna Winter of fashion. And I mean, he dominates everything. And it's slowly time for him to retire. Seriously, it really is. With all due respect and love for you, Karl, like... Thank you for everything you've done for fashion. Have a little bit of a rest. You've deserved it and you've earned it. Uh, Cancer 25. Hi, Jacob. Hi, how are you? Uh, are you a fan of Tom Ford fragrances? Which is your favorite from the line? I'm not a big fan because I think they're overpriced for what they really are. But I do like Black Orchid. 
I do like Black Orchid. I know it's like the most banal one, but I, I do like it. Helen Kayo, Eve Evans. Hi, Jacob. Hi, sweetie. How are you? Uh, thought you were in Paris? Well, what makes you believe I'm not in Paris? <laughs> or what makes you think I'm not in Paris? Could be anywhere. Um, Mateus Olek, uh, Cancer 25. I'm a fan of Tom Ford as a designer, but not really his fragrances. But on the other hand, I love his perfumes for Gucci. Yes, listen, when he was at Gucci and M7 came out, now it's reformulated, but M7 was incredible under Tom Ford. Incredible. I agree with you. Also loved it so much. Uh, Lauren Wegstaff, where is the fashion bunker? You don't have to give the address, of course. It's everywhere, my dear. It's here. It's there. It's nowhere. It's everywhere. Uh, Smokin' Oaken 66 Jacob, have you ever tried the Proenza Schuller PS1 tiny and medium-sized bags? They're amazing, but I've never heard you talk about Proenza Schuller brand. Uh, they're so functional and beautiful. No, not my cup of tea, but just, I don't know. It's not that I don't, I, I haven't dug into them so i can't really tell you if it's something that that's for me or not so again you see this is my obsession with certain brands in certain particular shapes and forms and i have the feeling there's so much i'm still learning from other brands that i love a lot uh that really digging and buying and purchasing even and analyzing in depth other brands and bags i do i don't snob anything I look at everything. When I go out and about shop, shopping department stores or what have you, I really check out all the brands that are there. Everything that kind of catches my eye, that has an interesting shape, color, or material, it, I go to it. I touch it. I feel it. I experience it, you know. But nothing has made me kind of want to purchase, you know. I'm very, very um, cautious that way. Smokin' Oaken says, uh, oh, Madeline M says, hi, Dick of Mistia. Hey, sweetie, how you doing? Um, Smokin' Oaken 66 says, or maybe Carl can teach master classes. Sure, why not? I mean, I don't know if he wants to. Um, <laughs> Jake Blake says, can't wait for Professor Dacob, would you imagine? I mean, I, I do some tutorial videos already, you know, like how to pronounce uh, brands correctly and what have you. Madeline M says, I have saw the newest video about the Moschino collection. And I must say I'm happy about the return of the elegance of the early 90s, original or not. I love the atmosphere of the show. Well, that's a, that's a good comment. Smokin' Oaken, 66. I have a large collection of them. So if you'd like to try one, I would love to gift you one of mine. Oh, let me know my gift to you. That is so sweet of you. Thank you so much. Well, let's figure this out. In case I do manage to open up another P.O. box... I will definitely open it up for all these things, but also because it's interesting to me to see what you guys love. Because when I did have the PO box open and a lot of you sent me a lot of things, a lot of you also wrote me specifically that you didn't want me to share what you sent me on video and on camera. And I respect that totally, so I didn't share. But it is very fascinating to me to see the, the, tr the treasures of people, you know. Uh, not to, to say, oh, some things are ugly, some things are not ugly. Everything is really subjective. You know, something that can be amazing for me can, can be really crappy to you. So I always say somebody else's shit is my treasure or, you know, my shit can be somebody else's treasure. And so it's always fascinating to me to see when somebody parts with something very dear to them to send it over out of love into the fashion bunker. To me, that's like a miracle, you know, because no matter what object it is, whether it is a handwritten note, a painting, a drawing, an object, uh, an empty perfume bottle, a full perfume bottle, um, a costume jewelry, a little jewel, a little, a, a pencil, a piece of paper, a petal, a dried flower, whatever. A thread from a jacket that, I don't know, you know, because the jacket means a lot to you and you have this little, you know, anything. These things have power. It's not about the object per se, how much it cost. No, forget the money for a second. Let's forget capitalism for a second. It's about what this object represents to you and the energy and the love that you imbued this object with is what arrives here and once it's here i don't analyze and and kind of study the object in terms of oh is this important in terms of fashion history does this style wise look good or bad there's none of that going down when an object like this arrives i feel the energy that's what i want i want to kind of understand what it means to you because it's about the history and the story behind that object 
And that's what creates passion. That's what love is all about, you know, and that's what also dedication to, to style is all about, ultimately, you know. Um, John Waters, who is the father of trash in, in cinema, you know, he says it takes really good taste. You got to have really good taste to make good trash, like a good trash movie. Kitsch, to create kitsch and trash, you got to have good taste to make it happen. It's a paradox, but not really if you think about it. Um, Lacey says, I haven't watched the Moschino show yet and I haven't seen your video. I saw some photos though. Uh, it's a, it, Well, Lacey, I mean, it's very dark. I think you would look gorgeous. I mean, those like thigh high boots and the heels would look a killer on you. Um, but all in all, you know, it's not your, you're very colorful and, and, and the love of life and, and sun and, and pop and uh, there's a bit of rockabilly in you and then there's a little bit of Andy Warhol there, the pop art. That's all gone in this collection. It's very s &M, like latex leather masks, very American Horror Story season one, you know, um, and very black, very goth. You would look gorgeous in it, like in every single piece, especially with the way you do your makeup. It would, it would just look great on you, but I don't know if you would be really happy wearing it because it's like literally all black. So, but let me know what you think about it once you find it, uh, once you check out the the collection. Jake Blake says, do you know about Chanel number 19 Parfum 14 milliliter version? I found an empty box in the garbage the other day. I guess it is a vintage. Uh, what do you want to know about it, Jake? Uh, yes, you know, in the past, uh, basically, um, in the past, Perfume production needed to state the exact amount of milliliters or fluid ounces that are present in the bottle. Now they approximate. So you might be getting a bit less than 15 ml or 30 ml. In fact, in a vintage number nine, uh, number nine, number 19 pure perfume bottle that I have, I mentioned at the beginning of the, of the live video feed, but I think you weren't um, tuned in yet. Um, it states on the package 28 milliliter, not 30. So this leads me to believe that, of course, today you were purchasing 30 ml. They rob you of two milliliters at least because they approximate. They're allowed to do that nowadays. There's a kind of a special logo that is placed on the, on the packaging that kind of allows them to do this. In the past, they had to really sp specify um, the amount of liquid. So 30 ml was 28 milliliter. Um, 7.5 milliliter today, pure parfum of, some, of number five, uh, Coco or number 19 or all the other fragrances by Chanel. I have a vintage Chanel number five, pure parfum. The box, the package states seven milliliter. So, you know, go figure. Uh, that has to do with vintage. That doesn't mean that uh, that bottle or container or whatever or packaging is fake. It actually really means it's vintage. Um, Abhishek Gohil says, what are your views on Ricardo Tishi? Uh, uh, time is Givenchy and future expectations from him. Well, Abhishek, you should check out my uh, videos. I made quite a few on Ricardo Tishi and his exit from Givenchy. So, because I don't want to keep all the people, because I could talk about it for hours. So, if you really are interested, please do check out on my Super Jacob channel uh, the videos I made on Ricardo Tishi and Givenchy. But the thing that I haven't mentioned is what I see for him for the future. I quite frankly thought that he would go and be head designer at, at Versace, but it seems like Donatella does not want to let go of control. So that doesn't seem like it's going to happen anytime soon or did it already? Not that I know of. I don't know. I still have to check out the entire Versace collection, uh, men that just hit the runways two days ago or three days ago. But I think Donatella designed that, but I don't know. I have to double check, but I have no clue what, I, I think he should start his own label, quite frankly, and just do his own stuff. That's, that's what I, I think he should do. Or, you know, he just earned so much money already with Givenchy that he's, he can literally retire, just enjoy his life, you know. Why do, why do you have to work? If you earn millions at a certain... You don't have to retire at 70-something like the rest of the mere mortals, us, is going to have to do. You earned your millions? Retire at 50, 40. What, I don't know how old he is now. He's around 50 now, I guess. Enjoy life. Why do you gotta go to another fashion house? Everybody's super bitchy anyway. It's always, everything is super dramatic and complicated. Do you need it really? If you're working for your own brand, 
it might keep you alive, you know, to keep going and to be challenged all the time. That's what kept Coco Chanel alive for so long because she kept working till her dying day. She died on a Sunday. And then it's it said by her, by the lady that, that kind of helped her, you know, clean the, the Ritz room and was kind of her assistant in many ways. It is, it is told to us that, you know, Coco, one of her last like words before she died was like, yeah, of course, they, you f go figure that I would die on a Sunday, the only day when I don't work. I'm allowed to die on a Sunday because that's the day that I don't, that's the, literally the only free day I have. Um, Smoke and Oak in 66 says, if you don't like the handbag, you can uh, sell it or give it away. I just think you would enjoy it. You have shared so much positivity and love of fashion. I only wanted to share something with you. That is so sweet of you. Are you kidding me? I never, ever, ever give away a present that has been gifted me. I just know I'm just not educated that way. Like I haven't been educated to give stuff away or to sell it. Never. Because if somebody sent something with a positive, wonderful, loving intention, that means the world to me. You know, I feel sometimes like Ariel, you know, the little mermaid, you know, that she collects all those little knickknacks, little things in her secret cave. And they're all, they're all treasures to her. They might not be for somebody who's standing on, from the outside, but to her they are. I collect everything, little bits of paper with little notes, handwritten things, little tiny drawings, everything. So if something that's sent to me, I'm telling you, it's not the shape of the object that attracts me. It's the intention behind it. So I could never part with it. Never. Um, Lacey says, I'm a fan of Jeremy's colors and kitsch, and I saw how dark it was. That's probably why I haven't searched the show yet. As much as I do sometimes love black pieces, I can't justify paying a lot. I know, Lacey, I know exactly what you mean. But if you want, you know, because now I updated my... Uh, technique here the bunker and uh the actual fashion review um all under youtube's guidelines of fair use or fair use guidelines uh the screen is split so you could actually so uh, you could see the the video playing of the fashion show and then i kind of pause it and i comment on the on the look and then it, and then it plays again you know so it's it's really visually very easy to follow uh the video so you could actually get a chance to, 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 you know, whatever, like, it's like talking to me, like doing a review with me and you could watch the video and, you know, but otherwise, if you want to watch it really quickly, there's like a 13 or 14 minute edit on the Moschino website itself, streaming right now of their own fashion show. Uh, Vegan Gangster says, say one more time, Givenchy, please. Givenchy. <laughs> Madeline M says, Jacob, how do you explain the success of Gucci nowadays? You said in the past you don't like the new direction the brand took. Do you still think it wasn't a good idea? Yes, I still think it wasn't a good idea. I still think Gucci under Alessandro Michele, it's a craze. It's going to pass away. It's already becoming boring. Um, I, I said it before. I'm going to say it again here. Alessandro Michele is a stylist. I don't see him really as a designer. Um... I'm quite frankly bored of it. There are, like, literally, um, there's one piece that I would like to have. In all these seasons that he has been head of, uh, that, uh, of, of Gucci, there's only one piece that I would buy. And quite frankly, it's, it's, it's very editorial, like, very influencer, blogger, vlogger, friendly, you know? I just, I can't stand that. And I can't stand, in general, influencers. Like, did you ever see me like hashtag a photo of mine on Instagram with influencer. I, I don't think I ever have. And if I have, you have the right to say bad Jacob. I don't think I ever have. I think it's like super lame <laughs> because I mean, what does it mean? It means you got to suck up to the brands. You got to not be honest about your opinion, about what you think about certain products in order to keep receiving goods and keep being sponsored and keep receiving financial support by certain brands you know and it just doesn't work for me if i don't like what you do i don't like what you do if i loved what you did the season prior i'm gonna say i love this collection but then in the next season you make something i don't like i'll be very constructively critical about it i'll say why i don't like it i'm not just gonna like piss on the parade and say like i hate it i hate it, it's horrible i'm gonna be like well i don't like it because of this and this and this reason a lot of the influencers, mostly, all of them, almost, uh, will not give you their honest opinion. They're going to lie to your face. They're going to say that a crappy product is amazing just because they got paid to say so. So be very cautious of who you're listening to. Lacey says, uh, my mom got some pieces from Jeremy's brand, um, uh, Jeremy's own brand, spring 2016 for Christmas. I need to do a video. I was going to ask you what you thought about Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang. Wait, is this a song or is it just Gucci gang? 
<laughs> is there a song called Good, like the Versace song? Versace, Versace, Versace. Or I'm such a sucker for these things. Now I really want to know. Um, yeah, uh, Gucci, no. Except for one model, you know. Smokin' Oakin 66 says, I agree with you on the Gucci designs. Must say, though, it's very cheerful, though. And I do like the bright colors and fun, trendy aspect. Though I wouldn't purchase anything. I appreciate it. I get where you're coming from. I'm also happy to see colors, right? And playfulness. But everything that he composes is styling. And by that, I mean, he takes pieces from the 70s, from the 60s. It's like a puzzle. He, like, puts them together. But that's not designing. That's styling. That's why I keep saying this is a stylist, not a designer. I see nothing new there. I see no innovation. And even the video clip to promote the new collection, you know, with this kind of clips of, like sci-fi movies and the, the creature from the blue lagoon or the black lagoon or whatever the creature that came out of the lagoon spaceships landings very 60s very ed wood style you know i'm like yeah cute you know but we've seen it before and we've seen it done much better and I, you don't you you don't fool me you don't fool me alessandra you don't fool me for a second you might fool the others you don't fool me and if i want colors I'm going to go look for them in the past. And I'm going to buy vintage. And I love buying vintage. Werner Panton. Look it up. My favorite furniture designer. That's the colors I love. The oranges that he used to use in the 60s. The purples. Oh my God. So saturated. So rich. The blues. The yellows. Basically, most of the bunkers furnished with Panton. I think if you scroll really down through the thousands of photos I have on Instagram, you might find really old pictures where I have some furniture pieces photographed. That's the stuff I love. If I want to feel happy, I go for that. It doesn't make me feel happy to spend thousands and thousands of dollars on a Gucci piece that is literally a copy of something that was way better in the 70s. It makes no sense to me, you know? And there's a lot of beautiful, colorful things out there. It needn't be a new Gucci piece, you know what I mean? Uh, Lacey says, oh my God, yes. <laughs> Erica Cooper says, unfortunately. Lacey Noel says, you haven't heard it? No, I haven't heard the song. No, no, Lacey, I haven't. The Gucci Gang song. <laughs> Lacey says, it's so bad. <laughs> well, go figure. <laughs> Vegan Gangsta. Yes. Uh, Smokey Nogi says, yes, vintage is often the best. Lacey says, there is a whole SoundCloud rapper's world out there who are showering themselves in Gucci and rapping about it at the moment. And let me tell you one thing more. I'm going to do you one better, Lacey. I was, um, a, a friend of mine works in a Versace boutique, right? Adorable, adorable. I adore her. Uh, I, I stopped purchasing all new goods, blah, blah, blah. You know what I mean? Anyway, so I just go to say hi to her from time to time. And she's like, Jacob, you know what? Sales are meh. They're okay. We survive. We live. But... It's mostly gangsters shopping for the Medusa. Like, literally, you know? The the pushers and all that stuff. The gangsters come in, very ghetto, need to bling it up. That's the Versace customer. Now, as cool as that may sound in, in a movie-esque way, you know? Because if you think about a Hollywood production, the gangster life seems cool. But in real life, it ain't cool. <laughs> so, um... That's where I start, where everything becomes a bit flaky. And when you start asking yourself, okay, hmm, when did the brand lose its direction? Or did the brand always want that direction? But I think to myself, there must have been a time when more diverse types of groups of people liked a specific brand. You know what I mean? It's very, very easy to see with Gucci. Now, when Tom Ford was head of Gucci, as opposed now to Alessandro Michele, there was a different type of clientele. A bit more intellectual when, when Tom Ford was there. Tom Ford would take literally many a times architectural buildings or shapes of furniture and would transfer those, like, we're talking space age, 60s, furniture classics, and he would transpose them and turn them into clothes and dresses. That's amazing. That's something that makes you think quite intellectual. Yes, you could say it's snobby, uh, you know, arrogant in some respects, like, oh, the gallerist wears, you know, uh, Tom Ford's Gucci. But, you know, nowadays, the same thing applies to the Prada. Today's Prada, it's the gallerists that wear Prada, you know, because she's all like this intellectual preppy chic. Super annoying. 
be more flexible in a way. But then you always have like a group of people, a specific type of social group that kind of follows your look and style. And then I have the feeling these brands cater more and more to these social groups and then they kind of fossilize themselves. And that's a, that's a pity because they kind of trap themselves in a cage and then it becomes in the future much harder to break out of that cage and experiment with something new. Alessandro Michele did break out of the Gucci cage, but it was easier for him to break out of that cage because since Tom Ford left, what was going on with Gucci? Nothing. Do we have anything memorable since Ford left? Like those, I don't know how many, 10 years after he left? Nothing. So it was easy to kind of just switch everything around, you know, and start anew. But for somebody, let's say, to come after him, now it's going to be trickier to, to switch the games again. Another designer to design something completely different, it's going to be difficult. Same applies, you know, uh, to Givenchy under Tishi. You know, Givenchy was Tishi. Now that he's gone, yes, we have Givenchy also moving on, but it's, it's not the same. Same applies to uh, Yves Saint Laurent under Hedy Slimane. We, we don't hear so much talk about Yves Saint Laurent anymore now that Hedy Slimane is gone. It's very, very difficult. And these brands are sometimes playing with fire when, when they kind of just, you know, don't want to hire the star designer anymore because they want to save money. Well, that's what you get. Tricky. Um, uh, <laughs> Smokin' Oaken says, I tried liking the Gucci Gang song, but it won't let me link it on here. <laughs> okay. I don't worry about it. I can't even play it because out of copyright issues. So I can't, uh, I can't listen to it while I'm live streaming anyway. Lacey says, these kids are all taking Xanax and drinking cough syrup. It's pretty bad. Oh, dear. Oh, dear. <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Smokin' Oaken says, I never uh, heard a Vuitton rap song. Who wants to write it? <laughs> We could do it right now. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, Rod Seven Days says, I stopped liking Prada back in the early 2000s. Me too, actually. Guys, this is super long. We're almost at an hour. I got to cut it short because I still have a couple of things to do. Um, but it was amazing to talk to you. Lacey, we got a date. Uh, we, we have to live stream together. Um, it was incredible. I, I'm just so happy that all of you tune in and this is just so much love and support coming my way. This, is, this really, truly means the world to me. Uh, the virtual world here on, 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 the, on the tube is much, much more powerful than the actual real world where, you know, you're confronted on a daily basis with people that just, I don't know, it, it's strange. It's a different type of energy, different vibe. But we create our own family. We create, here we choose who we hang out with. This is our free time. This is our choice. We choose who to share energy with. And that's the power of social media. And that's something that is lacking in a lot of other parts of life, you know, even in cinema. Hollywood, I have the feeling, is quite scared uh, of the power of, of the videos and films that are appearing on social media because they start losing control. Freedom to the people, freedom to the masses, power to the people, power to the masses. That's what I say. Because when you get a camera and you get a window and you're free to say what you want to say, of course, respectfully, with love and devotion, dedication, you reach the masses. The people are there. They're just waiting for for you to talk and they're just waiting to exchange information as well. And you're not limited by something that is preconceived notions of you know, multinational brands that kind of just bombard you with a particular type of style, guidelines, how you're allowed to talk, what you're allowed to say, how you're allowed to express yourself, how you have to trim and cut a photo. With social media, yes, you could play those by the rules of those type of games as well if you want to exponentially, you know, grow and, and abide by the rules of consumer society. But if you're slightly different, you, we call that niche, you still find your people and those are the best people. And I'm telling you, I wouldn't have been able to find almost any one of y'alls had it not been for YouTube, had it not been for this platform right here. Because we're all over the place, you know, all over the world. And would our paths have ever crossed? Otherwise, unlikely, really, you know. So we are all blessed to have met each other because I learned so much from you. And, and I'm so blessed that you kind of hang out with me, you know. It's one hour of your time and you're just sticking around with me, you know. And I'm really, really eternally grateful. Um, this humbles me. This is something that really makes me happy to be alive. Because I feel understood. And that's something that doesn't happen on a daily basis. Because, you know, I have very specific passions, things I love. And people don't get, yeah, can't say the F word. <laughs> they don't care about certain things. They just everybody's so concerned about futile things 
um, in life and let them be. Let them be. As long as we have each other, all the rest can go to, as Rose Nyland from the Golden Girls would say, H-E double hockey sticks. <laughs> so guys, thank you again for tuning in. Oh, look at all the love. Thumb up this video if you liked it. Show me the love. Um, <laughs> Helen Caio Evans says, love the way you go off on a tangent. Oh, Lacey says, love you, miss you. It was so nice talking to you on here. Gonna, uh, gonna watch your Moschino video. Yeah, it's it, it's fun. I'm critical, but I also, when, when, you know, when it's good, it's good. When it's not good, it's not good. I, I give both versions of the medal, obviously. Guys, I love you all so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thumb it up if you love it. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel here on YouTube. I'm also on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter. Guys, um, love ya. Don't ever forget. I'm coming back soon. We're going to live stream as soon as possible. Again, I got a lot of amazing videos lined up for you. Don't ever forget, despite all the odds, never give up on love. Love you guys. See you soon. Take care. Bye. Mwah.